Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to my studio. This is Paint with Lovejoy. Thanks so much for joining me. If this is your first time here, please subscribe to the channel and check out the other videos. And if you're here for a second, third, or fourth time, thank you so much for coming back and getting creative. All right, guys, this is another fun painting for my first time painters. So grab your supplies, transfer your traceable to your surface, and as always, make sure you take your progress photos. Now on my traceable, I did go over it with a black Sharpie marker for those of you at home that are gonna draw what you see. So if you're utilizing the traceable, you do not have to do that step. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna start with the background. And we are um, following Van Gogh's iris painting, but you have full permission if you want to switch out and do different colors here. All right, so we're filling in that background with yellow paint, and I am using student grade paint, so I'm applying it kind of thick, and then we're going to add a little bit of white into it and do some wet on wet blending. And we're going to take this section by section, um, and you're just going to get really comfortable with um, placing your paint on here, doing a little bit of mixing, and then when we get to the flowers, we'll be painting blobs, and that makes it pretty easy and approachable for flowers when we treat them kind of like blobs of color. All right, so again, uh, we're using that yellow paint. If you are on a stretched canvas, when you reach the edge of your canvas, if you want to carry this color around the sides, um, it just looks really nice when you hang it on the wall having that color wrap around the edge. And it's easier to do it now while you have the color made compared to trying to color match later on. Now, if you are holding your breath, take a big inhale, just relax. I'm proud of you for painting at home. And for my first time painters, you're gonna get some good skills here today. So here you can see where I'm grabbing that white and literally just slapping it right on top of that yellow. It does get diffused rather quickly. So I'm just doing a few brush strokes on top of that to kind of squish that white into the yellow. So just kind of play with this. And if you feel like finger painting to, to do this mixing, go right ahead and do that. All right, so this is a good place to pause your video, take a progress photo. We're gonna move down to the table and we're gonna be using yellow and raw sienna, kind of about equal parts. And if you need to, feel free to jump down to the smaller uh, medium flat brush um, if this large brush is, uh, feels a little too cumbersome for this section. And with that being said, any section in the video or any of my videos, feel free to switch out brushes and use what you need. All right, so again, applying that, applying that paint kind of thick on there. And then now grabbing just a bit of that direct raw sienna just with the corner of the brush and kind of just placing it more horizontally um, on there. And it almost kind of gives a little indication of the, the uh, grains of wood, the lines in the grains of wood here. All right, you guys are doing a great job. Like I said, I'm proud of you for painting at home. We're gonna move into the base and we are switching down to the smaller point, uh, flat brush. You can use the pointy brush. And we're gonna fill in this base and I am using the raw sienna and then sometimes I do grab a little bit of that yellow. Uh, so kind of your call if you wanna use just the direct raw sienna or a yellow and raw sienna mixture. The beauty of painting is you get to just make it your own. And because I'm using student grade paint, it is on the transparent side. So I'm trying to apply it a little thicker but we will put a second coat on this. So now we're grabbing that direct yellow, placing it right on top of the raw sienna for the handle, um, a little bit on the top and a little bit um, kind of into the raw sienna. It kind of got lost, so there's not as much of a distinction. But definitely for the handle um, is the important part for adding that yellow. All right. So this is a good spot to pause the video and take your progress photo. We're gonna move into green next and just get the base of that foliage on there. And then we'll move into our flower colors. So we're still using that medium flat brush. And we're gonna fill in kind of those pointy sections and a few other areas. And again, because we're using student grade paint, I would recommend that you apply this a little bit thicker um, and then we'll let it dry and uh, later on in the video, we will add another uh, layer on top of this. All right, and if you are finding that your brush is kind of shaky as you're going to do this, 
Uh, remember to exhale as you touch the brush to the canvas and that will help with your process. All right, doing good. And if you want, um, you can pull up the original Van Gogh painting and add more details that I may not be adding. I did do a simplified version for this, and this is more geared towards my first time painters. But whether you're following the video or you're looking at the original Van Gogh painting, you are strengthening your power of observation. Um, and that's just a good art skill to strengthen. So feel free to reference either one. All right, so a good place to pause the video, take your progress photo, and we're gonna move into light blue and we'll be using the medium flat brush. And we're basically gonna be using three shades of blue as we kind of make blobs. And we're gonna be using the width of that brush to make our blobs. So this is a nice way for my first time painters um, to kind of approach painting flowers without having to do the exact details, every single last detail. So here you can see that I've got that light blue and literally just kind of using decent pressure, squishing that brush out and just making these um, almost little box shapes or rounded rectangles. Um, some of them will have a little bit of a curve to them, some of them don't. So just kind of have fun with this. You're literally just slapping a blob of paint on here. And notice I've gone up to kind of a medium blue. Uh, we started with our light blue and then a little bit more. And then here we can use our direct blue so that way we're having three shades on here. And by having three shades, it gives us um, a little bit more depth and helps create this illusion of a 3D object on a flat 2D surface. Now you do want to overlap these blobs. Kind of my goal right now is to get rid of all that white canvas space. Um, and we will be doing this a second time. So don't feel like you have to get all of it in uh, right now. All right, looking good. So pause the video, take another progress photo. And I, it does help if you actually let this uh, dry a little bit uh, before you put the second layers on there. So here we're using that medium flat brush, uh, the raw sienna, and I'm just making little dash marks um, on the vase. And we'll do this with a little bit of yellow. And we're just doing this more to get in the Van Gogh. He did tons of little dash marks and was observing all kinds of different color shifts and changes uh, when he was painting. So to kind of make it a little closer to his painting, we're making these little dash marks that go around the vase. And if you recognize or look at more of his work, you'll see this uh, mark making uh, repeated in quite a few of his paintings. So here, just grabbing that yellow, doing the same thing, basically placing it exactly where we placed it the first time. But by doing the second layer, it gives us a bit more opaque coverage um, and looks a little bit nicer on the canvas, especially since we're using student grade paint. All right, looking good. Really proud of you guys. Doing awesome. So now we're going to clean that brush really good. We're going to go back to the light blue and our background is dry. So we're going to start overlapping some of these colors, these blobs for our flowers um, on the background. And I want you to again notice kind of the thickness that I make these blobs and how some of them will even have a little swoosh of a direction. So again, just kind of play with this as you're getting comfortable with um, making blobs, with applying pressure with the brush, with um, getting comfortable with the creative painting process. Now, if you are referencing the original Van Gogh painting, feel free to make a little more defined flowers or place some of the colors a little more specifically where you see it on the original, or just follow along with the video. There's always more things that you can do in art, and there's always ways you can simplify art. And in my channel, I do try to simplify it for my beginner and first time painters. Now for this stage and the next couple of steps, if you have any of that white canvas showing through in the bouquet, make sure one of these blob goes, blobs goes right on top of it. Um, that way it just kind of, you cover it up and then you don't have to go back with trying to match with a different color on it. And if you have to mix your shade of light blue <clears throat> or other shades of blue as we go through this process two or three times, don't stress about getting the exact same shade every single time. A little variety is never going to hurt your painting. In fact, a lot of times it makes it a little bit more intriguing. So don't stress about getting the exact same color all the time. So now we're moving into that medium blue. Same thing, still making these. Um, slightly uh, slight movement in our brush strokes and our mark making. 
And as you do this, I do recommend that you get out of your chair, prop your painting up, look at it from a distance of five to 10 feet away, assess, do you need more blue in one area? Do you need a lighter blue somewhere else? But look at it, what it looks like from that distance. And this is the normal viewing distance for most things in life and especially for artwork. And don't forget those progress pictures every now and then. You're doing a great job. I'm proud of you for stepping out of your day and getting creative with me. So now we're moving into that direct blue. This is our third, our darker value. We'll do one more after this uh, with mixing the blue and the black. One more darker shade. So you guys are doing great. And like I said earlier, feel free to switch out colors. If you want to do this with shades of lavender or purple, um, if you want to put a few colors in here, do blues and purples and maybe even some red, feel free to make this bouquet, this flower arrangement, um, more of what you want to fit your decor or your idea in your head. This is just a base to utilize. All right, so here we're going to mix a blue and black and a little bit of black goes a long way. So you don't need a whole lot. And basically it's just going one more darker shade. If you do happen to have any of that canvas showing through, make sure some one of these brush strokes, brush strokes gets on that area. Um, and again, this is just giving us our fourth value. We have our light blue, medium blue, dark blue, and then super dark blue. But it's coming along nicely. Really, really proud of you guys for painting at home. It's a nice escape from the rest of the world for a little bit. All right, so now we're going to go back to that green. And again, this is that second layer of the green on the parts that we already applied. And then adding some more um, for those blossoms that are kind of floating outside the vase. We need to give them a stem. There's extra leaves that are in between. And this is where I want you to trust your instincts. If you're inclined to put the a green color or a stem or a leaf somewhere I do not, but you need to on yours, go right ahead and do what you need to do on your canvas. You are the creator for your painting. And then even just adding a few more of those lines, um, kind of going over the blue, over those little blobs, and some for the parts of the flowers that are hanging on the table. All right, another good spot to take your progress photo. And there were a few things that I just wanted to kind of clean up. Um, so these are optional for you guys at home. I added a little more raw sienna, just some few spots on the vase. And then I'm gonna go in and take that yellow and raw sienna and just add a little bit more, um, add basically a second layer onto that table. So again, these last couple steps are optional. If you do not need them on your canvas, um, you can move right along. And I was actually trying to cover uh, that black Sharpie line too. It wasn't enough. But like I said, do whatever you need to to your painting. I'm really proud of you guys for hanging out and painting with me today. Please do not wait too long to do your next painting. And until then, cheers. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the process of painting and I hope you are happy with how your paintings turned out. I'm really proud of you for getting creative. As you're uploading these to social media, please tag me at or hashtag paintwithlovejoy or email me your pictures paintwithlovejoy at gmail.com. I really enjoy seeing them. Um, I try to post them on social media to encourage other beginner painters um, to try the process of painting. But please share this with your community as well. Anybody who is kind of scared to paint, share your experience with them and let them know kind of how much you benefited from it and how much you enjoyed the process. So kind of share, share the fun. Um, with that being said, if you have any comments, questions, feedback, things that you want me to paint in the future, please leave a comment. I try to respond to everybody as quickly as I can. And any of the future suggestions for paintings, I add that to my production list and get to them as quickly as I can. So in the meantime, please keep getting creative. Uh, let me know how you're doing. And until next time, cheers.